Joanne, <laughs> who is your favorite out of these two? <laughs> out of these two, let's see. Uh... Let's see. <laughs> Welcome to Howie Mandel Does Stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Jacqueline Schultz, his daughter. This is Jacqueline Schultz, my daughter, and these are the property brothers, What's Drew that? and Jonathan. Ooh. Drew is also my daughter, so yes. most people don't realize that. I'm really wow. my Eastern European is coming out with people the, don't the, uh, don't know, but I, in these days I don't know the fact that Drew is identifying as Jonathan's daughter. That's yeah. I'm going to respect. Is it that. because you want me to pay for things? What is if you don't mind? That, okay. That'd be great. All right, thank you. And they're also fellow Canadians. Yes, and they're also incredibly talented uh, musicians, uh, comedians, actors, uh, magicians. Well, one's a magician. Wait, you're, Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, Jackie, where were you born? Here. Oh, okay, LA. so you're a wannabe Canadian. I have dual citizenship. Oh, okay, so I am Canadian. All right, all right. All right. Yeah. And you guys are twins. We have name tags for you too, yeah, just in case. Know. We she made name tags. Just subtle. There's tape. If you want to tape it onto your shirt, just just, to, in, oh. just for the viewers in case they get mixed up. This is perfect. So <laughs> now, Howie, after all the years we've known you, if I put a Jonathan on my chest, would that confuse you? Would you? Would you know? Do you ever have a, a problem telling us apart? When's the last time you remember mixing us up? Because we've known uh, you forever. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah, but people mix you up. Do, um, when is the last time that you had problems knowing who you were? So, uh, no joke, I've still had that issue. If it's a message, like if we're li listening to a recording or if it's uh, a voicemail or something like that, every now and then I'll mix his voice up for mine. And so, we still mix ourselves up. Wait, audibly. you can hear, because you do sound the same. Yeah. Right now, I'm a Somewhat. little stepped up with allergies. Yeah. But. Jonathan has a Thank bit of a. God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He has you a bit of a deeper me. voice than me. But when we were younger, yeah. when we started our real estate company, we shared a pager. That's how old we are. And uh, anyway, with this pager, we would leave a, a message and then we would have to phone in and check it. But I would leave a message for him. And then an hour or so later, I would phone in to check the messages and I would hear for, the message. First saying, of all, pagers didn't have messages. Well, okay. We started with a shared pager. Then we got a StarTac flip phone. That's right. What it was. And then yeah. we would left, leave voicemails for That's each right. other. I'm forgetting the technology. Wow. I'm, I'm so old. But anyway, so I would leave a message for him. And then an hour later, I would check and I would just hear, hey, give me a shout. I need to talk to you about something. And then I would get in touch with him and be like, what did you want to talk about? And it was actually myself. I feel yeah. like this is a Radio Shack <laughs> meet and greet. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. So did you ever, well, see, I loved when I was a kid making prank calls. Now you so, could have, because you're, without doing that much, your voices are so similar. You could have gotten each other in like you could call aside from looking alike. But I think when you know twins, I dated twins, not you two. I did not. At date. the same time? It, much, uh, much to our chagrin. We wanted that to happen, but it never happened. But you didn't do that at school? No, I would we, imagine you can do that at no, school. No, no, I'm saying dating Howie. We oh. wanted that to oh. happen. Oh. Oh. Guys, we catch up, twins. catch up. <laughs> 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 we, we We're did. still on the pager. <laughs> we had one of our teachers at school said, because these twins looked more alike than we did, but they, he was saying how uh, technically our children would be related um, as siblings because they would look identical and, and they would have the same genetic code. I'm confused. Because we were both so you know what he's talking identical about? twins. Well, they, they would be like half- Right? They would be like half siblings. What this teacher was trying to say is that they would genetically uh -huh. look like they were actually related because it was twin parents. And they would and share DNA. Uh. But anyway, okay. to go back to your story, yes, we pranked <laughs> the shit out of people no, all the time. I would pr I'm talking about even pranking each other. Like if I was mad at, I don't sound like my brother, but if I was, if I was mad at my brother, it would be funny to call into his workplace or to call <laughs> the person that he was dating and just say something really fucked up and then just hang up the phone so and wait for them to get. I So I would do that just to mess with Drew. If there was like a girl in high school that was interested in him, Yeah, I would then, not just on the phone or anything, I would literally dress in his clothes. We looked exactly the same. When we actually when we were younger, you couldn't tell us apart. And I would go and make a total ass out of myself in front of her and then go away and then she would ignore Drew. And I'm like, why like, doesn't she that? like me anymore? And it's because, so <laughs> I, we would, we would do that kind of stuff. Cause that's the only benefits of having a twin is to pull pranks on people yeah. and to pin a murder on the twin. Exactly. So that's, yeah. you know, that's my out what, one day. Have you, you've done one out of two. Yeah. Moving you, on. We'll leave you to guess which one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I would, just cause I love prank. I love that you, in order to prank, had to put on the same clothes. Like yeah. you really think that, were your clothes are, that different that they would uh, know? If I was you a jock, so I yeah. There's there, there's more of a relaxed. He was a magician, so he wore like tight shiny shirts and he gold wore chains. tails and a top <laughs> yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. He, had he, had a top hat. Hat. Yeah. he had a top hat. Well, where and are you going to put your like rabbit? Yes. Yeah, so where did you put your rabbit? But you, uh, yeah, you you kind of 
the, the, the easiest way to prank people as a twin is when people are not expecting you to be a twin. So I remember there were situations like Drew Drew worked for an airline at one point. He, he got hired there first. And then he's like, oh, this is so much fun. You got to come and do this. And so when I got hired, no one he had worked with for the year prior, no one knew he had a twin. And so all of a sudden I show up and it was great. I had a field day. I, we, you were a flight summer. attendant? Were you a flight attendant? Yeah. 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 yeah, flight attendant. Did you ever work the same flight? Oh, yeah, absolutely. People yeah. thought we were air oh, marshals. People would come in. They'd come in the front door, and we would plan this all out. So they'd come in the front door, and I'd be like, hello, you know, happy Tuesday. Nice to see you. Go ahead. And then Drew would be in the middle of the plane <laughs> and would say the exact same thing <laughs> verbatim. Shit. And then people yeah. would turn around, but I would step back into the galley so they couldn't see me, and they just... Like, or we would go How to, the <laughs> fuck did the flight attendant is flying from the front of the plane? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good. Life. It was. Uh, we also got a couple of our friends hired, and this was... WestJet Airlines and uh, WestJet at the time was trying to be different than you know Air Canada was the Canadian go to and so they were hiring taller people because there was there was a height limit you weren't I think with Air Canada you weren't allowed to be over six two or something and we're six four so we wait 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 so this is their push toward diversity this is (laughs) er, er, early (laughs) days diversity yeah yes (laughs) so we had us and all of our friends were all like six four and so literally it was the best behaved flights because everybody thought we were a bunch of air marshals and they were all just sitting there quietly and we're like would you like a drink no I'm I'm fine I'm fine so (laughs) super easy flights yeah. But being that tall on a flight is probably as uncomfortable as it is sitting where you're sitting right now. I've, hit, I've hit some turbulence where I actually hit the ceiling of the plane. I would imagine you start yeah, on the ceiling. Yeah, I was going to say, you're only an inch <laughs> below the ceiling, so it hurt less than if I flew all the way up. Yeah, exactly. So is that flight attendant, I know you both, uh, you know, spoken for, uh, married and about to get married. You don't want to talk about what you're going to do about to get married because you probably sold an exclusive. Uh, well, you're looking at me, but that'd be Jonathan. The Jonathan. <laughs> do I need to put the name tag back on again? <laughs> Uh, I know you yes. with Linda. Zoe and I got and engaged just about a month ago. So. Yeah, but you don't yeah. want to talk about it that much. Did you sell an exclusive? You have an exclusive. What's Did you sell an exclusive? You can't say that. I, 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 it's more that I'm just a very personal person, so I don't. Okay, we'll just keep that. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. Pro- but uh, the uh, you what, are. Do you want to be like your brother? Do you want to have? Do you guys want to have kids? We have two kids. We have a six year old and an eight year old. So I'm I'm a bonus dad. Wow. Yeah, you're learning so much. I, I'm giving <laughs> Drew lessons about what he can expect. Can you tell how much homework he did before you got yeah. here? <laughs> you know what? I like to live in the moment, too. Yeah. This, this shows yeah. that Howie is more a fan of me because he comes over every weekend. Uncle Howie plays with Parker. Did you know he had two kids? No, I didn't, actually. So how much homework did you do? Well, it's not my show. It's <laughs> Howie Mandel does stuff. When you include my you're name, my, I'll do homework. Well, you're my stuff. I'm when sorry. You, <laughs> just give us a minute here. <laughs> When you include my name, I'll do some homework. How about that? Jacqueline, did you know that he had two And kids? you guys are friends. You guys yeah. are friends. How much homework did I have to do? I thought you, you got it because you guys are friends. Well, the original show was called <laughs> Howie Mandel Doesn't Know Shit. Yeah. <laughs> but then they're like, well, we got to change I like how you just got in trouble. He called you by your full name, like what a parent does when you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Jacqueline. <laughs> that is, that's true. That's why I hate to be called Howard. Howard was my entire uh, upbringing. You know, Howard was always Howard. Like is when you're in trouble. You know what, what would you did? do to get in trouble? By the way, what, what everything. was everything exist? He was always in trouble. <laughs> I exist. I I got thrown out of. Uh, I didn't. I don't have a GED. You guys went to college and stuff. I only did I, like a year. I, and I never finished my degree. I, I got into real estate. <laughs> Look at us bonding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. misfits. I'll tell you a quick name thing. Uh, you guys are all you know talking about Howards and Jacklins. My so everyone in my family is a J. James, Jim, Jonathan, Joanne. And hey, wait, was, wait, it's not doesn't end there. We're Jews. There you go. Boom. See, see how it all works. I'm fit right in. I'm an A. My full name's Andrew, and I was a surprise. So my my parents gave me the initials ass. That's my initials, yeah. and I think they did it on purpose just to stick it to me because my mom thought the pregnancy was done. She gave birth to Jonathan, and the doctor's leaving. They literally didn't know there were two, yeah. two of us. So uh, there was no, no ultrasound, nothing, and our heartbeats were exactly in sync. I was born, and the doctor left. And he the, left. The nurse yeah. like left the room, and then the nurse was like, doctor, I think there's another one. <laughs> and my mom's like, he was, Drew was born to, oh, shit. And then, <laughs> and then she gave me the, the initials ass. Which often is the same reaction today when he walks into a room. People are like, yeah. oh, oh, shit. Yeah. You're like a to-go. <laughs> I think it's more of an, <laughs> oh, shit. No? no nope. wow. Nobody, nobody, nobody does that. that. Like I made a mistake with my son's name. I named him Axel. But my husband's whole family, it, their first language is Spanish. Mm. And so they pronounce it asshole. <laughs> oh, yeah. nice. Did you do yeah. that on purpose? No, I didn't. I didn't know that. We didn't know. Did he grow <laughs> into the name? Is <laughs> yes. That? He, he fit, is an he asshole. Fit, he fits. <laughs> the name fits him. <laughs> He's an asshole. We love that asshole. Yeah. yeah. Who doesn't love asshole? Do you, how often? Well, that's not a good. Like, do, you, how, do you play with the asshole? 
What do you? Is, Daily. <laughs> Daily. <laughs> it's my. <laughs> I'm getting very uncomfortable here. I uh, am. Okay. This uh, went. How did we go from uh, tell me about your two children to do you play with asshole? This is like a quick. I was bonding. He said his name is Ass. Yeah. I said I have an asshole. There right. you go. Yeah. I, I know how we get. I know how we got there, but I just like that we did get there. We did get yeah. there. You are yours is walking now. Parker started walking, yeah, a week and a half ago, and it's amazing. I mean, he doesn't want to crawl at all now, and he's, uh, yeah, I can only imagine. I know we were like when we were little. He's starting to get fast on his feet, and he, he'll take things and boot it, and then he hides things in other rooms. And so now, for, for me, I'm trying to leave, and I'm trying to grab my wallet. He loves my wallet. He loves keys. All the things he shouldn't touch, remotes for, like, the, the, the window coverings, he takes them and hides them in other rooms. This is a great, for me, it was a social experiment because Drew was like, when Parker was six months old, seven months old, Drew's like, oh my God, I'm so tired and it's just so much. I'm so exhausted. I'm like, wait till he moves. You have no clue <laughs> how it bad it gets yeah. as soon as he's mobile. When they're mobile, oh my wait. God, the work is quadruple. How old's asshole? Asshole is seven, and then I have a nine-year-old too. Uh, okay, okay, so you, you've been through it. You guys can all give me advice. You're all well ahead of me in the game. <laughs> So, uh, and is, uh, is he, we were talking about this before we uh, started recording, but he's on the, off the charts in, in size? Uh, so or? he is big. So he's like 95th percentile for height um, and also weight. And I then was his, talking about Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan <laughs> is, no, he's a I'm little behind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but also his head size, which he's got a big head, which Linda and I have big heads. However, they say he's only like 75th or 80th percentile for that. I'm like, come on, Parker, gotta, pick he, it up. He's got you a real want? Bobby noggin. No, this is the funny thing. Okay, so we went to the pediatrician for his 15 month check in, and the and the pediatrician's like, you know, we can actually tell you now within three inches what his height will be when he's an adult. And I'm like, what? I had no idea that they could do that at a young age. I thought he had to be like four or five or something. So I was like, well, what will it be? Anyway, I was telling the story to somebody the next day, and I said to them, like, yeah, the pediatrician looks at me and says, sorry, Drew, he's going to be 5'11" give or take three inches. And Linda like hits me and says, the doctor did not say sorry, sorry. because he's going to be five. I'm like, it was in his eyes. He looked at me and gave me like this <laughs> yes. sad sorry. kind of, eyes. sorry, <laughs> it's not well, going to go your, your, your height. You're a big basketball nut, right? You Huge played, basketball nut. you played basketball. So at five eleven, will he, he'll be, he'll be able to, you know, he could be a good point guard. I, I want, you know, whatever he wants to get into, I just want to be coaching. So whether it's ballet, guitar or soccer, I'll be there. Even if I don't, don't know what I'm doing. Can they predict penis size? I, he doesn't have one, so it, it comes when they're like three or four, right? It pops out. Is that what happens? Uh, not Drew, yet. Drew, My son is seven. Find. It's a so girl. I'll, I'll let you know when it does. Wow, this could be a gender reveal cast. So he has amazing hair, which and curl. When Linda and I don't have much curl, I had a little bit when I was younger, but it's so we didn't want to cut his hair. But we've given him one cut, and it's still coming curly. But we wear a man bun all the time, so everyone thinks he's a, he's a little girl. And I love we like, wear so. a man bun. I, I love that it becomes a group effort. I have to do it if he does it. Oh. Why not? But how old you, are your kids? I don't know. Six and eight. Six, same spread. Oh, like the same. Yeah. So. And are, are they tall? No, it was actually funny because um, Charlie, our six-year-old, he says to me one day, he's like, will I be as tall as you? And I was like, oh, sweet thing. <laughs> Not a chance because his mom, 5'4", <laughs> dad, yeah. Yeah. you know, maybe 5'7". So I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> no, but that's very sweet. Yeah. So <laughs> Tell them your nickname. Oh, well, well so when, at school, you know, we all get together all the time. We've got a great relationship with his dad and, and everything as well. And so we'll, we'll go to these events and then he'll introduce his family. And so he'll say, all right, here's my mommy and here's my daddy and here's my big daddy. And so I'm big daddy. <laughs> big, oh, daddy? Big, yeah. daddy. big daddy. <laughs> big daddy. <laughs> Zoe calls me that too, but anyway. Uh, well, <laughs> she'll shoot me for that one. Really? Uh, and and uh, you guys... I'm fascinated. I've had an opportunity not only to know you and work with you, and but but I can't imagine how you keep the, the the pace that you guys go at, and how many shows, and how many projects, the behind the scenes of your shows, which is what the show is, I guess, showing how you get from point A to B. But it was mind boggling to me. It well, was. Go ahead. And you're a busy person. I mean, for, if you're impressed by it, then then we're doing something right because I've never met somebody as busy as you with all the things you have on the go. But think, we love what we do. Think of it this way: so you are like you ha hands on a lot of different pots. You're doing a lot of different things. We have the same thing, but the ability to divide and conquer. So Drew and I are like this perpetual mimo motion machine. Mimosa. Where, <laughs> we're this perpetual mimosa machine, <laughs> m motion machine where. Um, you know, I'll run with something on our products division. Drew will run with something on the production side. We have 15 series in production 
we host four of them and the rest are all other talent. But there's we can constantly keep pushing these other things. So when one's resting, the other's doing something else. How many houses right now, in the, as we sit here, are under construction? We have 20 in 20. LA and then I have a, a, about 20 in Charlotte right now with a rental portfolio. That's Sick. crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> Everybody, I, you know, you talk to friends in normal life and regular life and they go, you know, we're thinking of redoing our kitchen. <laughs> and I might have to move out for a minute and have so many decisions to do. You've got 40. Yeah. Do you think real estate is still a good market right now? Oh, yeah. To the get into? I mean, you can make money in real estate, whether it's an up or a down market. There's there's always any. You have to understand what the purpose of the property is going to be. One of the biggest mistakes is people rush into something and they get a little desperate for something and then they overpay. You're going to either make or lose most of your money when you first acquire the property. The other is some people will be like, yeah, I want to have multiple houses and they have properties that are sitting vacant year round. Mm -hmm. You're just wasting money on that property. If you have a property either be making an income off of it or be using it regularly. Like an example is if you, if you're, you know, the market crashes and people sort of like lose their shirt with their house because it, it lost value and they had to sell. That's, that's where you could lose. But in reality, in a market like that, the rental market is very, very strong. And so there are other ways to utilize uh, where the market is to make sure you're not. Yeah. What happens under. when mortgage rates go up? Fewer people get mortgages. They can't afford mortgages. When rent, when mortgage uh, costs go up, more people shift to renting. So it, it, there's the only people who lose money are the people who freak out and sell or the people who freak out because they're going to lose property and overpay. Do you guys ever consider doing like infomercials like that and motivational speaking about uh, finance, economics, and how to make money? I've been talking about setting up a proto booth and just lecturing people on the street about all the stupid real estate decisions, decisions that, that they've been making. What do you but think I, I, but do you, I, I don't think that's a crazy idea. No. And thank you for uh, plugging Plug. the proto booth. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what I'm saying is there is value in, you know, uh, one of my favorite books I ever read uh, was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you guys ever? Yeah. Yes, it is. So, yeah. so it was about how, and I don't have a GED, <clears throat> but it, was, it, was, it, it made making money in real estate kind of simple. I just think there's a huge market for that. And I think you guys need one more show where it's just <laughs> about, you know, oh, Q&A. Ju just you wait. Yeah, you just wait. Are you doing that? Wink. Okay. <laughs> Kenny. Kenny. The holiday. <laughs> it doesn't stop with you, does it? <laughs> this is another sponsor. Same sound. <laughs> Prize picks. Prize picks. Prize picks. A uh, different you know, sponsor. Yeah, uh, which I love because uh, it's the most fun I had making 25 times the money I put in. And I told you I like it because my husband uses it all the time too. With the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League. A league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, like LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey. We all know Travis Kelsey now. Oh, isn't that Travis? Taylor uh, Swift's boyfriend. Uh, the, the, the biggest Swifty there is. Yeah, at a 10.5 I wonder if he is a Swifty. Of three points made. What I mean Plus is receptions. he finishes fast. Good job, Dad. There you go. <laughs> Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, the player is rebooted. Yeah. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an <laughs> <laughs> with an injury insurance policy. Do you hear those bells going off? That's bells for prize picks. <laughs> you know? You I don't. It? No, you I'm just, I, I wish I could, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could have a producer pick. Yeah. Because I wouldn't pick Kenny. <laughs> Anyways, my husband has been using it. He loves it. I don't mind it because he's able to do it really fast. Therefore, he's able to come help me with the kids and stuff. And it doesn't take him a long time to do his whole fantasy league yeah. stuff. Okay. So how do they how do they get involved? You go to prizepicks.com slash Howie and use code Howie for our first deposit match up to $100. Okay. Yeah. So that is go to prizepicks.com slash Howie, Howie and use the code Howie for a first deposit matchup up to $100. Yeah. Isn't that great? That is great. This sound, not so great. Not enjoying the holidays. Not enjoying the holidays. They're not even here. And I want it to go away right now. No, no, I love them. Kenny. So good. Keep it going, Kenny. In reality, 
not everybody has what it takes to become wealthy in real estate. Not everybody has. You don't the, think so? No, because See, my kid, I believe they do. That's what's the rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. But even, even when you read rich dad, poor dad, you realize somebody has to have the discipline to actually follow through on certain things, have the discipline to, you know, not waste money on a lifestyle that's not going to get you anywhere. Not everybody has that discipline. If somebody is willing to actually do what it takes, anybody could do it. Anybody could be successful in real estate. So it's just a willingness to do it. Pretty much. I, so a lot of people don't have the discipline. Well, yeah, exactly. It's not just the willingness. It's it's the ability to um, put aside any, like people will make their impulse buys. Like everybody in the, the American way is to overspend and buy frivolous things that you don't really need. So if you can discipline yourself, but there's also in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I mean, they talk about ways of, putting, as soon as you get your check, put some of the money aside and pay down certain certain debts and then um, think ahead. That's the kind of stuff, if you can get in the habit of doing it, it's great because then you're, you're stopping yourself from even taking advantage of that Our money very first have. investment, we were 18 years old. We were actually leasing a property right next to the University of Calgary. And we were actually, we were squatting on the lease because it, they had, students had been coming and going from this place for like 20 years. The rent hadn't been raised in like 10 years. It was, I think it was 800 bucks a month and there were five bedrooms in there. We actually illegally finished two more bedrooms in the basement. So we just like framed up walls and put in beds. And we, so now there were seven students sharing. We didn't own the place. So everything was done just sort of, you know, temporary, but we ended up making enough money on this shared accommodation that that was our down payment on our first place that we bought. And then that first place we rented it, did a shared accommodation there, which paid all of our expenses for the next year. We then took that money and bought another place and that's how it all started. So instead of us going out and overspending on our own rental, we were okay compromising and doing a shared accommodation. And the one thing I would say in the early days, one of the lessons that we learned was we were always looking for a quick buck. We were looking for a quick flip and we did do a lot of flip properties back before it was popular. But when I look back now, if I was more disciplined, if Jonathan was more disciplined, we would have actually held on to more of those investments because what the, those would have been worth as rental properties or whatever now, it would have been ridiculous. We've still done well with what we've grown, but it, it's a matter of that discipline. So I, I think if you don't have to sell, don't sell, right? Is it, a, exactly, like the, why, why would you, it's like buying a stock. Do you buy high and sell low? No, terrible idea. So the only reason you would need to sell- Unless you're is, shorting. Oh. True. Uh, the only reason you would need to sell <laughs> is, uh, you know, if, if you're desperate for the money. So the other thing you can do, which is how a lot of people, you know, buy real estate is they'll, they'll loan against the asset they do have to get another asset, which can also be a good thing because it can make it so that you have the cash you need to do something else, but you don't have to dispose of the existing one. The downside is if there's a complete market crash, that's when you had all these people who wanted to be real estate moguls and they lost their shirt because they over leveraged. Yeah. So one piece of advice right now with, with, with the way the market's heading. I would just say you need to sit down and take the time to define what your goal is. If you know what you want down the road, then you can build a path towards that, whether it is holding property, whether it is flipping, whatever it is that you want to do. If you know that path, you can see it and you can follow it slow and steady. If you're just guessing like, I want to be rich. Okay. You're not, you have nothing laid out to get there. So how are you going to get there? Yeah. And it, for me, I'd say, um, be Every, every dollar counts, you know, so this is not just in your real estate, but in your lifestyle too, but also in the maintenance of your home, there's so many things you can do that will prolong the life of your asset. Um, and if you don't do those things, inevitably it's going to be 10 times the cost to repair something down the road. So understand how to properly maintain. If you can, if you're getting a property, if you can get a property that is maybe a little bit more than you need, but if you know you're going to have a family, if you know you're expanding, don't set yourself up to have to sell and buy another place right away because that's where you lose all the money to legal fees, real estate commissions, um, accounting fees. Get a place that you can grow into because the long, it, we tried to make so much money in quick flips. We did dozens and dozens of flips when we were younger and we would make like 30 grand a flip, but we had all the risk. One guy came in and he bought 10 of our properties from us and all he did is hold on to them for a few years and he turned around and made a clean million dollars off of the appreciation. The long-term play in real estate is always more successful than the quick flip. So that's the goal. Try not to buy, sell, buy, sell. Just get something that you can hold on to. 
I love that. Do have, you guys still have oh. you ever invested in short term rentals? Do you play the short term rental game or not really? Yeah, we don't, we don't do we a don't lot personally, but no. we have clients. And we, and we have, I've done a little bit of it. And actually, my wife and I had a, a property in Pasadena that we were going to build out to be short term, but we've just, we've changed our plan with what we want to do with that too. Same thing, more, I you know, building long term rental portfolio. You know, it's exciting to think that you can make more money on short terms, but it's a heck of a lot more work as well. And also in California is tough because there's so many restrictions uh, with, um, you know, rental restrictions and, and what you And also uh, one thing to keep in mind with any rentals, always think about, you have to be comfortable with some vacancy. Some people are not comfortable with vacancy. They get desperate and they'll put somebody in who they're like, oh, should I? And it turns out that this person destroys the place. So you have to be okay with a little vacancy to get a good tenant. We, we had a crap tenant in the very beginning we learned. It was the first time we were getting uh, tenants, that first house we bought. And we wanted to have people live with us to help offset costs. And we did jump in just to get some people. And this one fella was awful. He, uh, it turns out in the end, he does this regularly. He'll try and get in somewhere and then try and set up the owner for being liable for something and sue them. And then he tried to sue us for, um, he said, so our dad's 89 years old and our dad was helping us renovate and fix some things. The guy said that my dad tried to throw him down the stairs and he tried to sue us. And the court, the judge looked at him and said, are you an idiot? You're a healthy young, I think the guy was like 38 or something. And my dad was in his seventies and he's like, you're, you're saying that a 70 something year old beat you up and threw you down the stairs. But some people are just out to, to get you. Take your money, your whatever way. That, that sounds, that was in Canada though. Yeah, was, that was yeah. Canada. That's a, that's the American way. Canadian I don't know. Jerks. <laughs> yes. We're supposed to be so polite and say, sorry. Well, well he did say, uh, my dad said, sorry, when he threw him down the stairs. Okay. <laughs> your dad was in show business, right? Wasn't yeah. your dad yeah. like a stunt man or a, yeah. 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 See, I did some homework. You did a little bit. I did not their some. dad, not them, their dad. Yeah, he's more interesting than we are. Yeah. But, he but was, yeah, he was in, he started, so my dad came over from Scotland back when he was a late teenager because he used to watch cowboy movies and he wanted to be a cowboy. And so he had no money to his name, worked his way over on a ship as the second sanitary engineer, which basically cleaned the toilets. The and second sanitary. The second, not the first. Which you means can, he only cleaned the number two. Yeah, yeah the he did the real dirty <laughs> job. He, yeah. he made his number way one. To, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> he made his way over to Alberta, and he was a cowboy for decades. That's where him and my mom met. My mom, not your mom. Yeah. And uh, anyway, <laughs> from there, he, because you know how to ride a bucking horse, he rode in the Calgary Stampede bucking horse, and they the Calgary keep, Stampede. For those of you who are, are Americans and know nothing about our country, is our biggest rodeo festival it's the it's, world's biggest is it, rodeo. It's, it's the greatest outdoor show on earth trademarked yeah players. is that true well, whether really? it's true or not they, they trademark that <laughs> right. so. but uh he because he could ride bucking horses and he was a cowboy they i had him on some movies ride as a stuntman and then he got into some acting some second unit directing and yeah. Let's, so he skipped the key transition part as a rodeo guy dad was a bear bronc uh rider he got hired to be in a commercial and it was i believe it was a Budweiser commercial and riding a bronc and he ended up becoming the bud man for like years and years and years and then he got seen he, uh, somebody saw him from a movie that was filming and they wanted him to ride horses in a movie and that was his transition to film and then he did a bunch of other stunts and stuff too I love that you're talking about bud commercials and transition yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly. the circle of life it's the circle yeah. of bud that's amazing yeah but everybody <laughs> <laughs> Your dad is is still your dad. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 He's I don't want to go someplace that I'm. Why you? Lo she looks at me like you when I'm always treading. just like teeter on the edge of being not okay, <laughs> of like cancellation. You teeter and then you come back over. It's like more like <laughs> you're you're gonna be paused. You're not gonna be canceled, <laughs> but you're gonna be paused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I just call it as I seize it. So is that, was that the inspiration for you guys to get into show business? You got into sports, you got into what, magic, magic. You guys were acting before. Well, yeah, yeah I wanted to kids. be an actor and director. We both acted as kids and we were in theater. Jonathan wanted to be a magician, but no. What theater, our, what our, plays our did dad, you do? Oh my God, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Drinko. We did Grease. I uh, played a were lot. We the same play. We did a lot of plays together. Yeah, yeah. he was Kinnicky. I was Danny. He and, beat and me out for the good yeah. stuff. But it's so funny that you have identical twins playing oh, yeah. two different parts in the same play. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey. Oh look, there's Kinnicky. No, that's Danny. Listen, we had yeah. low budgets. Okay, low budgets. Very low budgets. But why do two characters look exactly the same in a play? The school production. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one else cared. Um, 
but yeah, my da- our dad was not the reason we got in. Um, the he way didn't want us to. He didn't want us to get into the entertainment industry. He said it's a thankless industry, and you work you know crazy hours, and then it's you're just full sort of, of tossed aside. And yeah, and so the more he said that, though, but he would bring us to set. So we, I remember when we were little, I went uh, on the set of Look Who's Talking, and I got to meet John Travolta and Kirstie Alley and a bunch of the cast. And to me, it was so exciting to see this big production and what it was, what was happening. He took us to a whole bunch of, of sets like that, and. The more he said, where don't was do the it, bucking bronco? Yeah, what and was look, a stunt? What was the talking? bucking b- bunky bronco? And look who's talking! Isn't that the, the, the baby talking? Bruce no, 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 no. This, this, this was after. Dad wasn't working that film, so Dad, Dad's friend was running that film. Oh, so okay. Dad, but he would <laughs> yeah. take us to film. When, so when we were born, that's when Dad decided to give up the movie business because he wanted to be a dad. So he, you, you know, dashed his dreams. We, da- we d- I well, think he, he the, used it as an excuse to get out of what he didn't want to do. He, he came home. He would go away for four months working on these big movies, and right. he, he said when JD was is just i don't know like two years old he came home and jd didn't know who he was and he's like i'm done that's i don't want to do that anymore so he said it's it, he, well, he would rather be home with as a dad with us and then where i say um no if i get a big movie gig um parker linda see you later i'm going to see him four months uh, <laughs> that's no wonderful. wait what don't tell him i said that classic <laughs> drew <laughs> <laughs> wow you are such a soft heart you should work for hallmark you know, when, yeah. when drew mm-hmm. met linda I had to set up his dates for him. So I, I had, I planned out like the romantic, uh, wait, like what? Wait, 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 why? Why? Drew was, a, his nickname you was the robot. You made me sound like a total asshole. No, Drew's nickname was well, the no, robot. No. And so he was always like that. And so he wanted to do like a romantic evening. So I created like a scavenger hunt, a romantic scavenger hunt with wait. a website and everything. <laughs> this and is like gave, Cyrano de Bergerac, listen, right? Listen, <laughs> one date that I wanted to do was like, uh, like it was creating like a digital scavenger hunt and then we were going to go somewhere. I didn't know how to do it, and he did it. But uh, I didn't and have it you worked. spoon with Linda and all those other romantic things we <laughs> did. Did you help with the proposal? No, you no, did the own. proposal. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you, looked at, you <laughs> did the proposal. You proposed. Yeah. I actually, Does, so, so she loves, uh, you know, oh, the places you'll go, um, you know, yeah. the Dr. Seuss. Yeah. So I created, we went for dinner at this place. We were filming in Toronto at the time. And uh, for dessert, you know, she ordered carrot cake. But I had I had pre-made this gigantic cake that had the character on top holding the ring. And then I got down to propose. And I had this whole thing set up to make it elaborate. And I had cameras set up and mics set up. But our camera guys had set the cameras and checked the lighting. And then the, the, the manager of the, of the restaurant wanted to get more moody. and turned the lights way down low. So in so the video, romantic. I looked like... Like it's just me and a black booth next to me. You don't even see Linda. <laughs> and our, our mic guy, he mic'd the other side of our table. So all we heard from the audio was the awkward first date of the people next to us. <laughs> and so it, none of it worked out. But when I, when I went down on one knee and they, they brought the cake over. And uh, also I had pre-recorded the song uh, Marry Me by Train. I recorded yeah. it. And then I had a playlist of, of music playing. And then that song came on. And I'm trying to get Linda's attention to it. And this whole thing I set up. And then at the end, it's, when it, I'm down it, on one it's knee. It's Drew singing this song. And then, and he's like, like, hey, what do you, what do you she's think? like, what? Yeah, she's like, yeah, yeah, great. Anyway. So, it's train. Dude. So then I get down on one knee and they bring out this cake and all this thing and I'm about to propose and Linda looks and she's like, uh, uh, no, I ordered carrot cake. <laughs> and I'm like, will you marry me? Anyway, yeah, it was... All me. No See, John if I had planned one. it, it would have been It would have been better. Yeah, it <laughs> shows time. how good you are on your own. You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're I really good you. on your own. <laughs> but that that's probably funny. Is that a video? Do you have that? Well, I have. It's a terrible video. But And then Linda did say after that, she's like, oh, my God. Like, Linda's very, you know, or like she's yeah. just a, such a deep soul and loving. And she's like, can we keep this to ourselves for a few days? She wanted just to uh, cherish it. And I'm like, yeah, let's keep it to ourselves for a bit. We had our crew Christmas party to go to after that, but I had flown in all our family and friends. Right. So all of her best friends and everybody were there. So we went over to this place for the crew Christmas party. And when she walked in the door, she said it felt like she had died because, you know, all the people you know in your life line up and they're there. As we're walking into this restaurant, it was literally all the people she knows from her life. And uh, Was it a beautiful eulogy? It, Did they yeah. give a eulogy? Yeah. Hey, if she said no, I was just going to be a really good send-off party. Well, you so. waited, what, eight years? Yeah, something so like that. you guys that, went out for eight years before you asked. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But Zoe you guys would were literally dating murdered for me. a long time. Four. Oh, yeah. Half. And she did threaten my life. Yeah. Was, so wait, 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 wait. So she threatened you? Like you were? This was? A, did you get <laughs> an ultimatum? ultimatum? I no. I said <laughs> uh, liar. Back I, that one up. <laughs> yeah, I said to her, I'm like, you know, you know, it'll happen. What's gonna happen? But for me. I love the element of surprise and I love, I was like, you're a magician. Could, exactly. <laughs> and so I could not do something predictable. And so there were several trips, like we were in Vancouver. We actually went and visited the place where my dad proposed to my mom, literally at Stanley park, right on the edge. And 
she thought it was going to happen there and it didn't and so then she was like i give up i'm not going to think anymore about it were you messing but, with her like when you were in that spot did you go down on one hundred percent because i didn't want her to she be able knew to this was the this was the spot she, you said this is where my parents yeah oh yeah, yeah. And uh, and so you know there were little things here and there where she's like we were in another uh, we wait to, and you got down look you got down on your tie your shoe or what what did, what did you do it, for the real proposal no, no, no. no oh, to mess with her Park. no I just I went went there I'm like how cute is this this is where mom dad proposed to mom and I'm like you know we took a little selfie not picture where I and proposed to you yeah, yeah. yeah. Psych. <laughs> yeah. you take a ring off your finger and you're like oh I fix but, it. You know, the one thing I will say is I do have very clear audio and video from my proposal yes i had a i had a drone i had five cameras including hidden gopros and uh Wait, i have the, from your proposal yeah you have, at, at, at some point i'll tell you and she and didn't see it coming not a clue it was there was drones amazing. and cameras all around you can yeah. see on her face she had no idea it was coming really <laughs> <laughs> it'll all it'll all make sense in the future. <laughs> Stop that. No, I'm just trying to set up a no, romantic exactly. kind of feel. Jonathan had gassy. It was a gassy day for Jonathan. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. gas. Don't, that was supposed oh, to be don't a do Taco oh. Bell before okay. you propose. Yeah, yeah no. But it, it reminds me of her proposal. Her uh, years ended up being romantic, but it was. I, I think I've told this story before. But uh, when she was with her uh, fiance or before he was even a fiance, she was waiting like Zoe, not unlike Zoe going, hey, hello, hello. And simultaneously, like wherever they showed up or wherever there was a trip or wherever we would, you know, she'd think, oh, this is it. This is the romance. No, 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 no. Yeah. I said, I want to be proposed to at Disney. I was a Disney person. <laughs> it was happening at Disney. We were talking about rings. He took me to Disney. She wanted it, a Disney wedding. And it didn't happen, and I cried the I whole way home. I said, oh, I said oh no gosh. to di a Disney wedding, because she wanted me to be King Triton. And mm. I wanted to be, I want to wear a shirt <laughs> at the wedding. But anyway, <laughs> but the proposal, simultaneously, I had... Uh, Can you spell simultaneously for me, please? You say yeah. the funniest I've well, ever heard. Yeah. Sim <laughs> simultaneous. Simonize. Simultaneous. 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 You're missing an missing L. Letters. There's an <laughs> L in there somewhere. No, I'm going to bring it. It's Canadian. I just got in the word. It's their Canadian. You I can't know. fool them with that. Ooh. Simultaneously. Simultaneously. Is that right? Yes. yes. Simultaneously. You shouldn't have I let them. you get away with it the first time, but not the second time. Yeah. Simultaneously. Yeah. Simultaneously. This okay. is a story. All right. No, it's okay. So, it doesn't everything. matter. The Disney wedding. Triton. No. Didn't happen. Moved on. <laughs> yeah. No, I moved on to their uh, the engagement to, to tell a story that's kind of like yours. They, I had got my daughters, she has a sister, the same car. They both had a car. The other daughter, her younger sister, was at college and called me and said that her car got stolen. I called the cops and we reported this stolen car. Mm -hmm. They had the same car, I got, you know? And as it turns out, two days later, my younger daughter was walking by a mall and saw her car. She had just forgotten where she parked. Oh my it God. It was not stolen. Yeah, that's what I said, <laughs> oh my God. But I didn't, like an idiot, I never called the cops and said, oh, we found it. So they just had a report of a stolen car, oh, no. right? And um, I had also given the wrong license plate because I had two cars exactly the same. Oh, I had yeah. given Jackie's license plate. So um, as ja Jackie being my daughter expects everything to be a huge production. <laughs> so <laughs> she pulled into valet parking someplace in Santa Monica. And at that moment, that car was surrounded by cops with their guns drawn oh my saying, God. get out of the car get out of the fucking car now. And she goes, she looks at her husband, uh, her husband to be and goes, very funny. This is what you planned. Uh, this really? is what you planned? <laughs> and she goes, no, he goes, this is not a plan. He goes, yeah, very funny. And they're going, they're screaming on the bullhorn, <laughs> get out of the car. She goes, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to get out of the car. They take her out of the car. They go, turn around. She goes, this is not funny. Put your hands behind your back. So she puts her hands behind her back and raises her ring finger, thinking that the cop oh, is no. going to put a ring on her finger. They put her face down on the ground. They handcuff her. She goes, this hurts. This hurts. It's not funny. It took her forever to find out that this was really an arrest. It wasn't my proposal. Do you, wouldn't it have been amazing, though, if your now husband, at the end of all that, was like, will you marry me? Th that would have been amazing. Well, then, after that, he did end up taking me to France on the beach and proposed uh -huh. and I didn't believe him.
I said, this is a fucking oh joke. God. You're not really. This proposing. is like the, the cry wolf. It's the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're impossible. I am impossible. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. My daughter. It's my offspring. Yeah. 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 But at least you didn't forget where your car was parked. Right. I have that going for me. Yeah. Yeah. I am better than my sister. <laughs> There's a reason why you chose me to be on this show with you and yeah. not her. And not put your name on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> you were my stuff. Yeah. She doesn't want to be. And your I know your brother, you have another brother. Yeah. Is he older? JD, 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 JD. Two years older. He's I've seen him on shows and stuff. Is he pursuing the, does he do this? He's done our show. He actually had what I think is the greatest show of all time uh before, the the most fun to host. It was called all American amusement parks, and all he got paid to do was go and test out every amusement park in America. In America. Yeah, it was the greatest gig, and he's like, it was so fun. Everything from Dollywood to you know Six Flags, you name it. He I would just rides. go film it and do rides. Yeah, and we're knee deep in demo and and dirtiness, <laughs> and he's just like re re doing rides and having fun. But uh, yeah, so he's done some shows, and we have him on Brother versus Brother. He's like the the mediator, mischief maker. You guys still show. have this Scott Brothers uh, real estate company? Jonathan, I do, yeah. 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 So you have offices in in Vegas, Calgary, Vancouver. Not not Vegas anymore. So we're we're here. Um, we our main headquarters are in Nashville and then our production headquarters are in Toronto. And then we have some satellite folks working, but we don't have actual offices outside of those two. Places. But just a, a, a pure real estate com company? Oh, nope. our, no. our real estate operates out of our corporate office in Nashville. But um, yeah, we, we have our own investments that, that we do. But oh. we yeah, we don't do services for other people. You're not like brokers? No. No. Oh, I mean, no, no, no. I'm, yeah, I'm we, still licensed as a real estate agent up in, in BC, but uh, I don't We closed our brokerage. It was interesting because when we... We were running our brokerage. We had other agents working for us. And then we started, Property Brothers took off immediately. Within three months, we were the number one show on the network. And we're that like, was oh, a, that's an amazing story. That was in Toronto, was right? You yeah, guys... so it was actually originally, the show aired in Canada. It was turned down by the US network. They Wasn't like, it originally you got, uh, they wanted you to do a show with a girl? Yeah. No, well, it, it, no, originally yeah. Drew got hired to do a show called Realtor Idol. It was like American Idol for realtors. <laughs> and, and he called me, he's like, dude, I greenlit a show. And, and he's like, tells me what it is, Realtor Idol. I'm like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. No yeah. one's going to watch that show. Fortunately, then, that didn't go anywhere. I they, pitched that production company, Jonathan, me what we were doing with clients at the time. But the funny thing is, in the very beginning, because we both got in there and... Realty and, and we, Idol, what was the... Just, I want to hear what that concept it, it, is. Honestly, it was just a bunch of realtors competing to get clients kind of a thing and, and sell houses. And But was there a panel? It, it, they didn't get that far. I mean, <laughs> I, I auditioned them and it didn't go anywhere, but it was just a dumb idea. But um, they wanted, when we first greenlit pro for Property Brothers, they wanted me to be the brawny construction guy because they thought he looked more like a suit guy with his fancy longer hair. Do you remember Jonathan's old hair? It was yes. like a lion-ass mane. Yeah. Beautiful. The blonde. He was, uh, like, he was inspired by Siegfried or Roy. I existed yeah. in slow motion <laughs> with wind. But he, then, then they realized uh, he's a licensed contractor. I was a licensed realtor, not a contractor. And so like, oh, this could go wrong if we had the non-contractor guy pretending to be a contractor. So they yeah. went to what was real. But we, I remember early in the early days, we tried to, to film the show. So we were away on location filming. My brokerage was in Alberta. And uh, it was, there was too much liability. because I as So I was actually the broker of our real estate company. And so I had to review every single contract for every single property while Exhausting. still trying to film. And then there would be like a closing happening. I'm filming, cut. I quickly have to make a call to the lawyer and blah, blah. And so we finally just decided to hang up the hat of the brokerage and just do the shows. And so you know. on our shows, when we, we, we no longer have, we don't buy and sell houses with clients. The only house show we buy on is Brother versus Brother, where Jonathan and I each buy a house, renovate it, we compete, we flip, and whoever makes more money wins, money goes to charity. All the others are homeowners, whether you've had your house for five days or 50 years, you're eligible um, for the show, yeah. Would you ever buy a house, like if I bought a house, would you guys make a show out of decorating my house? I, love, I loved working with you. We did- uh, Celebrity I, IOU. I've been trying to be inspired by you. I made a video of me. I got inspired by demolition. I demol uh, and then- You demolized? I de <laughs> so, simultaneously. Sim simultaneously, <laughs> I demolized. <laughs> Two rooms, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you put the L in the wrong word. Well, I, that's part of the demolish. I demo demolish the English language. <laughs> oh, yeah, Want to see the video? Want to yeah. see what you inspired? Yeah, there's no yeah. L. No Here's L what you inspired. This is, uh, look at this. Okay. Right. Oh, no. I rented that. I'm going to dig the hole here. I broke it. No. I, bro I broke it. No. Yeah. If you're, watch on YouTube. Yeah. See, Harry, these old Harry. houses are built a lot stronger than you probably thought. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You also Perry, broke the my, hydraulics on the. I did, and my wife is in the house. 
She's got mad at me. <laughs> Don't talk about Wait, whose house is this? Dinner. Mine. What's for dinner? What did you make? Oh my god, that's hilarious! But you did work with him. Was he the hardest person to work with? Oh I know. I, I will tell you something about when we worked together. So, we've done fifty-five episodes of Celebrity IOU. Everyone from Brad Pitt, Viola Davis, Melissa McCarthy, you name it, and a lot of funny people. Tons and tons of funny people. Nobody has the crew has never simultaneously <laughs> agreed. Yeah. Uh, that someone was funnier to work with than you. They said that they actually were amazed they could get anything done because they were laughing nonstop. And I was like, that's great because he's amazing. But to try and get you to focus and do work, no. oh very hard. It was, we, we literally would be trying to get to the, because we only have a finite amount of time to film and we're trying to get into a scene and we go and he's curled up in a drawer in the kitchen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how you got in there, but you were it was, in there. It was like you had a team of writers in his head. Right in your head. Yeah. Right yeah. There. It was nonstop zinger after but zinger. I, I got to paint your head. But you guys are we, funny. You did paint my head. Oh, yeah. We I think fun. we have a video of that. We have a video of him painting my... Do we have a video of him painting my head? Rich is here. The guy that yeah. I did I did the condo for. He oh, was... love yeah. Rich. Yes, we love you Rich, too. You made him cry. Can, can I just say uh, thank you to all you guys? Thank you to Howie. Of course. Thank you to both of you guys. It was amazing. I really appreciate I, it. Can I say to you, thank you for giving us that before... <laughs> with that space, with the the, bo the beer caps. And you're, you were living that frat lifestyle yeah. a you. little too long, but... <laughs> Yes, yeah. college is. Oh, there you oh, are. Oh, yeah, we were trying there to pick the which color to go with. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Terry. And Jaffe. Yeah, thank you. You're thank fast you. with these clips. Could I literally just say any clip and he'll pull it up? Yes. Maybe. What was the music video that I was in with you? You had me do a music video, or I think it was a music oh, video. Oh, was it? What? I did I did something? Oh, God, I can't remember now. I think it's that. funny. So when, such when, when we're with you, it's just goofy and we, it's just sort of like hanging out and having a laugh. No, but you did a song. You guys uh, are. Uh, we, we billboard charted with one of our. Are songs. you rolling on it? Oh, no, okay. no. I was just talking they can over find it. Clips, but they can't play them. Yeah, there, there. I am painting. Oh, <laughs> uh, we can't hear it. Uh, it's I, okay. Oh, there. there we go. I'm colorblind, and I've never painted. You know what? I kind of like that look. That kind of dark, manly look. Whoa! Oh, yes. this looks way better uh, I than that, I thought you guys were going to. Than the actually. creamy peach. Wow. People may not remember this, but when I was young, my hair was. Oh, was it? Oh, Hold on. Wow. Yeah. I can't quite picture that, but let me just... Uh... No. <laughs> Can I tell... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah there you are. You know? Wait, take off my but we you didn't know like at that time group. that it would come off. Yeah. I'm a Jew man group. That You're a Jew man <laughs> group. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Can I, Rich, can I tell the story uh, about the... Uh, and you could tell me I can't. The Homeowners Association, uh, homeowners Association, because they have to redo it? Sure. So... I think you, I don't know if you guys know this, but you, you, you remember it? You, oh, went, you went to visit them. That was, yeah. a, that was a treat. So this is a condo and you can't do certain renovations without the homeowners association, which I think is a show. I think somebody has to do homeowners association shows because yeah. it's crazy. But because it is a condo and because it wasn't the bottom floor, um, he had carpet originally and you guys wanted to put in hardwood and hardwood was a big thing. And, and when we uh, submitted the plan to the homeowners association, they said no hardwood because of noise. Yeah, yeah clack, 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 yeah. But they said, if he has a note from a doctor <laughs> saying that it's uncomfortable <laughs> for him, he needs that kind of uh, to stand for his back or whatever, maybe we could submit a note from a doctor. Can't. <laughs> Can I interject with one thing? The amount of work that went in before this, I pleaded to the board and said to them, because their bylaws were so old. These bylaws were from like 50 years ago, 60 years ago. And there are from where the, for, for the beer caps came from. Exactly. The same year. Yeah. And so there are products now that you can use under hardwood as an insulator that will prevent the noise transfer. So you'd have the same noise from carpet that you would on hardwood. I'm like, they would not I do sent it. them all these technical drawings, all this information. No, no, no. But then they said, if you can get some doctor to give you a note that you trip on carpet, <laughs> they'll do right. it, it makes right. no are sense. you kidding me yeah. anyway so go ahead sorry so my friend happens to be an OBGYN, <laughs> <laughs> and he made a he made a note so rich thurber has a note from his gynecologist yeah that he he shouldn't he can't have carpet he can't have carpet yeah. oh my God. so well, even you got hardwood and his girlfriend had to shave or it wax is, or it whatever. is unsanitary <laughs> to have carpet no yes he, oh he, he, she's waxed uh yeah I, I, that's I, crazy see what i did call, call me wrong but I was, I was pretty sure the gynecologist is they can't prescribe for hardwood no that's true you're right <laughs> yeah where yeah. to 
but your morning wood goes to where the gynecologist's workspace So it all works out. Yes. In the end, I like like that Rich. It works out in the end. You better (laughs) flip her over. (laughs) I'm disappointed that your guys' jokes got more laughs than mine. I thought it was amazing. It was good. Can you get, can you add a laugh track, guys? Yeah, we, no, we have, have it. it. We, we have, have it. it. Go ahead. Okay. Hardwood. No, that's <laughs> oh, oh, that was standing Thank ovation. You. Just press. No, that's just crickets. Oh. Yeah. Hardwood. Hardwood. Oh, oh. Wrong one. That, actually, there, that last there, one was there, pretty good. There. Oh, there, there, there we go. Yeah. I'm amazing. Yeah. Rich, Rich is so embarrassed right now. <laughs> Uh, so good so this is what it's like if you go to a like if you are performing I do like a lot of corporate dates do you guys do corporate dates do you do like uh, every now and then we don't do a lot because I like being at home with the kids so I don't do a ton of them but uh, I didn't even know you had them yeah Yeah. exactly (laughs) now you know I know this is amazing has to be a pretty good gig though for us to to go and do one are you gonna but are you doing because you were touring doing music you're not doing that anymore well we so we actually only toured when we did a book tour um and we made the music part of the book tour so that we we called it the property brothers what the hell do we call it house party yeah we called it the house party tour and because a lot of times you do a book and you know you've got like boring a boring bunch of things you read so we're like let's just go have a party and invite everybody and so we did like like auditorium tours everywhere it's it's what you would see on AGT, that level of talent. We did a whole bunch of different things from magic to singing, you know. Have you ever considered coming on AGT as a contestant? Remember you wanted me to perform magic on there? I did. I never performed the trick that I designed that I was going to do just for there. I still have all the props. I never did it. What what people might not know about Jonathan, besides being a magician himself, you are, and without giving anything away, but you're involved in building some of the biggest illusions that people have seen from other... I built a lot of illusions, yeah. and I you work with Copperfield? No, I, I know David, but uh, no, he's got like the greatest illusion builders of all time who work for him. But uh, that's how I started actually, even with construction and everything, I, I would do metalworking and woodworking, building illusions when I was a kid. I, back then, I didn't know you couldn't just steal someone's idea and build it. So like I would watch- You're not allowed to do that. Don't no. say that. You can't <laughs> do that. You're not allowed to do that. But do as that. a kid, I would see something and instantly I knew how it worked. You know, even watching like Siegfried and Roy and Copper, I would instantly know how it worked. Oh, and then Siegfried I would try and, and build it. You figured out how that worked? I don't know. <laughs> You know, did, I got it did it work? I don't know. <laughs> it is an illusion. Tonight is filled with illusions. Siegfried and Roy. Yes. He tried that. Jonathan tried that sort of theatrical voice for a while. It didn't go did, well. Did he, you he, really he, perform with that kind of voice? Did you no. do that? No, no but he did but wear he David Copperfield shirt. clothes. He had the puffy shirt and the, like the, the bomber jacket and then the tight black jeans. He was, as a kid, he wanted to be, that's why I find it amazing. So him and, and David are, are friends now, and I think it's just hilarious to think of how he used to idolize his illusions, and now they look, look like sit at home and watch a movie together. Like it's, uh, yeah, wow. the, the way things change. That's beautiful. My child self is like, dude, you've made it. It's done. <laughs> Magic, though, is like paramount on AGT. We've had a lot of. You guys showcase some of the greatest. Well, yeah. One of my favorite ones is a Canadian, also from Vancouver. Who's that? Shin Lim. Oh, Shin Lim. Oh, yeah. Vancouver. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Incredibly talented. Yeah, he, he actually just started a Vegas residency. He's doing amazing. Yeah. I think he's at the Mirage. Is he at the Mirage? I don't know. I have a you question. Know what's funny is you my, know, mom, oh. my mom texts me. Cause, so I don't really watch TV. So I, I never know what's on or anything. But the one thing my mom will always text me is a good magician from AGT. That's the first thing. I know that AGT is on because my mom will text me and tell me, you got to check out Shin Limmer. You got to check out something. And that's how I hear about as it. As much as I like magic, as much as I like magic, nothing makes me laugh more than a bad magician. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's It's amazing. the greatest. But this, this is what I find funny is you have some, their whole career has been built on you. How like Shin Lim, he makes the like, cards come out of nowhere. Right. But then there's some magicians that have built that same routine off of making CDs appear out of nowhere. Right. And, like, no one fucking knows what a CD is nowadays. <laughs> right. Move on from there. Get on to something else. But they just won't let it go. Well, some magicians, they, they'll they have a great act. And then that's the only act. They get so busy performing that act that they stop creating new content. Same with comedians. There's some well, comedians that just say the same act for 10 years. But it's not only the same act. I say this to a lot of people. I say, you know, and it's kind of like comedy in the sense there's, you know, you can only, there's so many setups and, and things that you could possibly talk about and the way you, you construct a joke. So I think there's five tricks, you know, there's, you know, you, you, you see this, where did it go? Yeah. You know, or you're, uh, you're exactly right. Cause in or the, you don't see it. Here there, it is. There are, there are <laughs> yes. essentially, especially when it comes to illusion, there's essentially, you know, five or six fundamental 
types of illusion and everything is just a different color box or a different presentation and that's how they do it but when somebody comes up with a true new effect and some of those today are in integrating technology or whatever it might be it's mind-blowing and i love it but nothing is worse than a bad magician and and especially if it's one that's obvious what they're doing but i actually will go down rabbit holes online watching videos of terrible illusions and there's one that i love where the person tried to fly across the audience oh, yeah. and the the rig they were using didn't work what would i is that on youtube yeah and it slammed them into the back wall of the so theater and then they just hung there fails. unconscious magician fails oh, that's not funny T ma magician <laughs> terrible. Yeah, it is. yes but, it is you know one thing i've noticed with agt though is because there are a couple of magicians who've gone on there that I've never seen anything so bad in my life. They're so bad. But then after the show, they edit it to look like you guys, they'll take your response to a good act and they'll put it next to theirs and they'll use it as a promo video on their website and they'll be like, the greatest magician. For promos, but not for not for in the show. No, 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 this no, isn't no. the show. This is the, the, the bad magician the show. Yeah, puts yeah. an illegally edited video together yes. to make it look like you liked them. Is this the one you're talking about? Is we can't, it, do you see I it? I don't see it. They don't know that I'm asking them. Do you no, see No, I know, but I don't see I any don't just see lying. it there. Uh, yeah, it's like, it looks like a community theater. Worst magician fail. Anyway, we could, we could literally do a 17-hour podcast just looking at these. I don't want to. No. <laughs> no. no. I'm almost done here. <laughs> what are you plugging? What's next for the Property Brothers? There's Wait, always, I want, I want oh, to know, do you guys ever fight and get mad at each other? You guys are working together so often. Everything you've said that you do together. Do you guys? Yeah. Know? No, it, it is. I mean, we've had, what, three fights? We've, oh, when we we've were only younger. had three, like actual like fights physical like physical fights, fights? who we won were, yeah. no this is the thing they were the <laughs> dumbest the I've, never, I've never hit him i would never hit him jonathan had no problem hitting me so uh <laughs> when, we, when we had our fights when we were like teenagers and then one when we were probably early 20s or around 20. that's not true you threw me on a moving car what oh. that, was, that was in high school in high yeah, school high yeah school. so there, here are our three fights one was when we were really little we were in a hotel room and we were kind of picking on drew and whatever and he was you know I don't know. You were annoying me somehow doing whatever. And, he, and so I then I know. ended up just like, we were like, ah, and then I boxed his ears and he started bleeding from his ear. And I was like, I thought I was in so much trouble. So I was like, ah, and I locked myself in the motel bathroom. Wait, you thought you were, the, the scary thing was you thought you were in trouble. Not, not that, that he went there. No. Yeah, exactly. So it turned, oh, he's bleeding from the ears. <laughs> this this is boy, out, I'm just, in trouble. I scratched his ears. Turned out what it was. But, but everything is actually Jonathan. Yeah. Teaming up or being on me. So the next one was in high school. Him and our, our bestie, they had saved up. They were just kept harassing me. They saved up all these old sandwiches for weeks and weeks and weeks. And they're all <laughs> rotten and moldy. And they shoved them in my locker. They knew my code. And uh, anyway, they did that. And he pulled on my back strap. And that was like the straw on the camel's back. He had pulled my backpack and the strap ripped. And so I was like, God, and he tried to run away. And he but went it, it was my buddy that did it, not me. And but he turned around slower. and grabbed me. Well, are you saying that because you're afraid you're going to get in trouble? I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he, he, Pedro was faster than Jonathan, and he took off. And Pedro? So, yeah, Pedro. Well, his name's Pedro, but we call him Pedro. But Pedro in Vancouver, that's unusual. Yeah. Yeah. It, right? Is it? There's a large... Well, that's... Well, he's Iranian. Well, he's, he's Iranian. His name's oh, Pedro. I just think in Pedro, because, you know, we have a... I've never seen... Never mind. Mo moving I'm on. Gonna, okay. Yeah. I know. Stop with, with the face. Again. Stop with the face. So Jonathan was slower than Pedro and he ran out the front where all the, the cars were pulling up to pick up students. And then he's like, don't you dare come after me. And I grabbed him and I threw him in front of a car that was pulling up. And was uh, the woman, the mom who was in the car had a heart attack because yeah. she was like, it, a student just bounces off her windshield. And that was that. The third and final fight that we've had. But that thing is, is did you explain to the woman? Like she got out, she stopped. Yeah, I was fine. Yeah. She's only going like, I'm Two sorry, my brother's mad. Pedro put sandwiches in his yeah. locker. <laughs> exactly. Like, once you explain like, it, it oh, makes sense. That's Pedro. So much sense. <laughs> oh, Pedro. Yeah. Uh, the third? Vote Pedro. All right, so next uh, was when we were in college. Uh, Drew was in, he was in our side alley, and he was being really annoying. You see, there's a common thread here. Wait, wait, and wait. He's in your side alley. He's in the side alley, sitting in the car, in his car. Sounds super and, annoying. Yeah, and he's yeah. he's just being like, he's like chirping at me, telling me to do something. I'm like, and so finally, like, I, I'm so fed up. He's in the side alley in. chirping. I'm just yeah. reiterating for the people at home. He gra I reach in, I grab his keys out of the ignition, and then I say to him, like, all right, well, good luck finding these. And I just throw his keys down the alley. What and I a walk jerk in. move. He flies like a banshee out of the car. And I'm like, don't you do it. I'm done. And I like, clench my fists. And I clench my teeth. And I broke my own tooth. No, no, sorry. 
Yeah, yeah. Wow. You, so, you so, showed so, him. But you yeah, you showed him. Own tooth, but it was you know what I'm going to do to you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bust my own damn tooth. So what, no. we, what we've learned is Jonathan bullying and being selfish and then uh he but that's when you're deserves. kids nothing when you're older and then you still have to they work together 20s. and film no i think our we call it our no bs policy the way we work together and the way we you know we get on each other's nerves from time to time everybody who spends time together will right but we get uh, we get over it if there's we something, get it yeah, yeah you see we get it. exactly you get it out you deal you with saying? it you move on yeah. there's no what are you saying <laughs> Do you want to work through this right now? No, no, we've spent so many episodes working through our past trauma. Let, we're focusing on you. Oh, the circus. <laughs> our trauma. Bring up the circus. Yeah. Are you bringing up the circus again? Yeah. Don't bring up the circus. Okay. What's the circus? Oh, no. no. This, this podcast is the circus. <laughs> I left her at a circus once. Oh, oh that, every parent does that. Did you do that yeah. hoping that the circus would move on to the next town with her? It, it did. did. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Oh, oh man! <sighs> but you guys are fine working together. But you never like in the midst of like you because you have to work in such tight quarters. Like you're always just together when you like in the moment. Like there's a lot of like couples on TV that have renovated renovation shows and stuff like that. I and I feel that. like you realize I know, we're not a couple, right? Just yeah. so no, you know. No, I know, <laughs> okay. but I feel like I could feel the tension. I never feel like actual. Tension. There was we, well, guys. we had one shouting match like a month ago about something. Well, uh, something else was bugging you. So Jonathan yeah. was already in a bit of a, a huff, and so um, and then I could just see the tension. And basically, long and short of it was, we were we're we were permitted to shoot on the on the street where we were, and there was a woman opened her window, uh, had her window open, and she yells out at us, "Excuse me, can you move down the street? I'm uh, you're you're bothering me." And we're like, "Oh, so sorry. We're, gonna be, we're literally one more minute. We have one more minute left. We've been filming for twenty minutes. Yeah, we've been there for twenty minutes." And she's like, "Stop now." What were you bothering? Like, what is what do she, you hear? She just said the noise of our conversation. We were just talking because <laughs> crew, crew was literally filming our conversation. So it'd be like, you know, well, this this house is such and such, and this house is such and such. and uh, so she's like, "Stop talking now!" And so uh, no joke very kind i'm like oh my gosh i'm so sorry we're one minute and we're done and we'll be out of your hair she's like no now you stop now <laughs> and i'm like this is the problem i have no time for bullshit and if people are being unreasonable i my tolerance level is very low well, i will come in here and say jonathan says in a very kind voice i said from my perspective it was a very passive aggressive voice that said uh oh it looks like we're gonna be done in just a minute so maybe you're bothering us okay and then it, and, uh, I'm like, oh, I was like oh, no, that was the second round. Right, right. So yeah. anyway, long story short, he blew up more than I thought he should. No, and I'll then, tell you. I'll tell you what I said because it's funny. <laughs> this woman, like, she keeps going on, and she's like, "Shut your window." She's like, "I'm dealing with. I'm a psychiatrist, and I'm dealing with clients, and you're ruining everything." And so I said, "You know what might actually help if you just close your window? Then maybe you'll stop bothering us." And then she goes like, "What did you say?" She's like, "No." And then I, I said to her one more time, "I'm like, yeah, I don't know. This is." I'm thinking you might need some of your own medicine. And uh, anyway, that's when Drew's like, stop. And I was like, I just have no time for people's BS. So that was the last argument we got in because Drew did not want me saying that. And I was like, well, after I, I walked up to him very calmly just to say, what is going on? And he's like, don't even, I know exactly what you're going to say. And I'm tired of people's bullshit and, and whatever. And I'm like, okay, someone needs to have so what a we're saying is time out. <laughs> Watch out guys. Don't give yeah. me any bullshit. All right. Well, you're anyway, we had, uh, you know, I, I, I what we did find out, it's funny, you should tell that story. That woman had just received a phone call from her doctor who informed her she only had 11 minutes to live. Mm. So, the, oh. and the last two the minutes. Last so, two minutes every minute, room. every minute counted. So, we yeah. got those quality minutes. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm getting it now because I was also left by my mother at one point. So, mm -hmm. I get the whole. Where did you get that? In a circus? Safeway. We not, were, not so much, right? But <laughs> it, I, actually, I vividly have the, the memory. But for how long? But for how, not so that long. So for anybody we, we in America, were, Safeway is a grocery chain. We should call her. You want to call her? They call have mom. Safeway yeah. Can we call mom? groceries. Do they have it yeah. here? Yeah, yeah they had it that. in Santa yeah, Cruz they do. when I went to. So oh. dial it. We can plug Slowly it in. Slowly they're, they're changing them over to, uh, uh, who was it here? Safeway is changing to, um, I don't remember which one it is. But anyway, uh, so the funny thing is mom, so we go to the mall and- Talk to her. You tell the story. All right. With, with her. you want to tell it with her on first? I'll, I, you plug it. In, once you dial it, plug it in here, and you'll be able to hear it in your head. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you the story first before she interrupts? Because she always interrupts when I tell the story. <laughs> so if she interrupts, uh, Drew will yell at her. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like. That's <laughs> true. The uh, 
she basically we went to the mall and i was like old enough i was like eight or something like that where i could like go around the mall but meet mom at a certain time so she said all right meet me out right at the door of safeway when i'm done okay and this is in maple ridge where we lived and then so i go there at the time and i'm waiting and mom's nowhere around and then i'm like oh my gosh did she tell me to meet her at Zeller's on the other side, which was a clothing department store? And I'm like, did she say meet Zeller's? She said Zeller's. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I ran to the other end of the mall, and I go there, and then Mom's there. I'm like, no, she said Safeway. She said Safeway. I ran across the mall all the way back, and I literally did this three times. By this time, I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm, I'm, I'm upset. I can't find week. her. I go yeah. really a week ago and then <laughs> I, security just finds me and they're like what's wrong and I'm like I can't find my mom and so they take me to the security office and they're like right. and this is before cell phones and everything and so finally they're like well let's call and see if we can get your dad and so they call home and mom answers and we're like what's happening she forgot that she had come to the mall with me. And so she left me at the mall and went home. She thought no. she took you home. She took Drew home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, hold on. I'm going to call Let, mommy. Okay. We have to, sometimes you have to face trauma and uh, relive it. And then it, it will all heal. She'll probably shoot me for really? putting her on the spot. But. If she doesn't want to be on the spot, I'll, I'll edit this no, out. We'll, or I'll, we'll, do it, anyway. we'll she, do it anyway. She did say to say hi because, as you know, well, then she's I will your say biggest hi. fan. I did talk to her once. Here, look at it. There we are. Really nice. Really I could sit down. You'll see, put on your headset so you can talk to her. What's your name? Joanne. Joanne. Yeah. I saw. Her. Hello. Hi. Just a second. Hello. Just a second. Hi, Joanne. Yes. Hi, it's Howie Mandel. Oh, hi. Hi, and I'm talking, and I'm here with my daughter Jacqueline, and I'm here with the boys. Hi. Oh, great. And we are just doing. First of all, you know, we've spoke. Remember, we spoke before once. I think we did. Yeah. Yes, I, yes, I do. Yeah. So uh, I've been talking to, well, I was talking to Jonathan about the uh, traumatic experience of you leaving him in Safeway. <laughs> what? You don't remember? You do went you home? remember? Don't yeah, you remember when I was like, I don't know how old I was little. I was like eight or 10 or something. And we went to the mall and then I was supposed to meet you at the front door of Safeway. And then... Uh, I went there and you weren't there. And so I was like, wait, Running back Zellers? And, and I went Zellers. to Zellers and then went back to say, when it was Zellers, nowhere. And then security took me to the office and then we ended up calling home to see if we get dad and went, and then you answered the phone at home and you had gone home and forgotten that you had, that I had come with you to the mall. And before you feel bad about him telling the story, I left my daughter at <laughs> a circus. To you too? Yeah. Well, I left my daughter at the circus and they moved on to the next town. So it's a bigger story. <laughs> so what we want to know is, were you so trying to give me happens, up? Isn't it? In the, with all the excitement of having children. It, it really is. And I would imagine, yeah. Joanne, when you have two that look the same it's no big deal to leave one at the mall no <laughs> there's always I, another one i know i'm your so favorite good. mom I'll mark one up for me that's uh, i get a what, what do you call it a mulligan on that one yeah a mom gets a mulligan a mommy mulligan, mulligan. Yeah. So anyway, mulligan. how is it going i enjoyed watching you last night thank you thank you very much and watch tonight we'll find out who wins but joanne <laughs> who is your favorite out of these two <laughs> out of these two, let's see. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out which one it is that is my favorite. I can't tell them apart. My, my dad has no problem telling you who his favorite is, though. We Here. actually do not have favorites. I Wait, keep telling him. Hold I on. told him that for years. Mom, is dad there with you right now? <laughs> is dad there with you, Mom? He is. He's right here. Yeah. He's got a sandwich uh, in his mouth. Dad He's usually will tell. What in his mouth? A sandwich. A sandwich. A sandwich. Yeah. Hi, Dad. Not you one brought home all the sandwiches from the locker? See? All right. Yeah. Dad, Dad. We, Dad, we need to know who's your favorite. Between Jonathan and me, who's your favorite? I don't have a favorite. Oh. I love you both. What did he usually say? You know, they JD. Usually say JD is the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll let, we'll let you guys go. It, uh, it's Howie here. You're on the podcast. And we were just, uh, he, uh, the boys were regaling us with the story of the time that uh, Jonathan got left at, uh, are you familiar with this, the Safeway, where your wife left uh, your son at, at Safeway? Uh, yes, and another time too. <laughs> I, was at, I was at the Safeway with Jonathan, and I was there one second, next second he disappeared. And I had to go looking through the mall for him. Yeah. See, this is the thing. Jonathan makes Jonathan. it out like my mom left him, but Jonathan was renowned for being told, stay right here, and he would be gone the next minute, and also he would take everything apart. He had to touch everything, and he had to take everything apart. So he's the problem. The, the thing about I, you... I'd like to say one thing. Go ahead. That Jonathan always wanted to <laughs> be a podcast. magician, 
And I think that was him trying this out. You know, he's yeah. disappearing. He really disappearing. He himself it, it always comes back to the magic. It does. <laughs> it does. And that was the first illusion. Yeah. The, yeah. the illusion yeah, was right. that, and and he made uh, Safeway the least safe way to uh, exactly. spend the afternoon. No, no, no. The first illusion <laughs> right. was when he was born, and then magically uh, he, he had a, a, another one he up, made here, another up here. Up here. So. Yeah, we just heard that story that Drew was the You had no idea that Drew was in there. Where was he? Mom? Dad? What, what was that? Where so, were you? So you had Where no idea he? when I was born? You had no idea I was there? Oh, my gosh. No, that was a total surprise. And yeah. how long ago did you realize? <laughs> I realized when the nurse took the was well, actually the doctor didn't even know. So uh, anyway, Jonathan comes out first and then the uh, nurse says, doctor, I think there's another baby in there. And, and then I unfortunately said, beep. Wait, what, what is no, it no, you no. said? What, what did you say? You could say it. This is a, We're not on TV. Oh. We're on a podcast. Well, I'm gonna, I prefer to say beep. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you say what but, you say and we'll way. put a beep? It is biodegradable. Oh, yeah. shit. shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, Mom, wait, wait. Why don't you say it and we'll actually put the beep sound effect over what you say because it's just Howie oh. listening. Okay. Shit. <laughs> I'm not going to beep it. Don't beep it. You <laughs> jerk. I'm not going to beep mean, it. really? I'm not going to beep it. Last, uh, that was the last time I ever swore, I think. Yeah. Right. Mom. We're not going to, you know why we're not going to beep it? Because now, not only is it kind of funny and adorable that you said that and you're so uncomfortable saying it, but I think there's a lesson here. This is a teachable moment and people should know that shit is biodegradable. Yeah. So See? it's a science. This is yeah. like a science that's lesson. I, yeah. That's the, the next renewable time energy. I have said it. That's what I always say. Yeah. Well, I think uh, it, I'm it's... I'm always thinking of the environment. And you know, see, that. she, she yeah. inspired us in, in naming me ass, you know, all the things that... He that said you did. named him ass. That, that's the acronym for Andrew oh, yeah. Scott. And Andrew, Andrew Alfred, Alfred Scott. Scott. It's a very... Yeah. It's an upscale ass. ass. Oh. 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 That was after... High class Alfred asshole. was after my dad. Yes. After your dad? But, your dad was an ass? <laughs> 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 well, you guys oh, have. Uh, well, he was a fine, outstanding gentleman. No, I was just kidding. I, I would imagine <laughs> this, that you have a beautiful family. You're a wonderful lady, and uh, you've created some uh, amazing offspring who are making the world a better place to live in. So, thank you for taking this time and talking to us. And uh, stay healthy and be well. And I'll see you in 20 Thanks. minutes. Thank Other you very town. much. And Howie, yeah. keep being Howie. How, I love you. Thank you for that note. I don't know. And I'm going to do that and not because you told me to do that. I don't know how to. Be uh, anything other than yourself. Like I don't have a twin. Yeah. I can't be anybody else. Keep giving the world something to laugh about. We need more. Well, mm -hmm. well, thank you. Well, you've given the world uh, enough. Two things to enough. laugh at. Three. <laughs> Three things to laugh at. No, JD, yeah, we, is, no one laughs at him. They just boys. laugh at They're us. All yeah. Laughable. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> love you. Bye. See Bye. you later. Bye. Wow. Yeah, all right. That there was you great. Go. And she said shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, I have not heard her swear because she'll usually say pickle. Pickle is her word. Yeah, pickle. pickle? Oh, pickle. Oh, pickle. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't heard her swear in a you, very, very long time. You piece of pickle, you. Yeah. Oh, you dill pickle. Yeah. <laughs> like that's my, that's bull pickles. That's like when my daughter the other day wanted you to give her a dollar because she said that you said a bad word and yeah, we couldn't said, figure out what it was. She, she said, I said the C, C word. word. And I said, I said the C word? <laughs> my granddaughter heard me say the c word she goes you said it i said i didn't say it spell it Correct. and she she said c-r-a-p crap <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah but my son yeah. once when he was little he he said i know dirty words i go you don't know all the dirty i i said you can't in our house like your mother has we were very respectful and didn't talk like I talk in the world now. And when my kids grow up and he goes, I know the worst word. And I said, you know the worst word? He goes, yeah, I know the word girls hate. That worst word that uh -oh. girls hate. And I said, what is it? And he goes, I'm not gonna say it, but it's the worst word and women hate it. And I go, I'm gonna give you permission because I wanna see that you know it. And he pointed at his crotch and he went, you know, the K word. <laughs> <laughs> and I went home and I told my wife and she goes, did you correct him? And I said, no. 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 <laughs> and if you talk to him now, Alex, he'll say, you know, know you next Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our, uh, our daughter Alex. is like, super, she's eight and she's super sweet and her friends have all started to learn bad words and she doesn't know any of them and she's like, the other day, uh, I was, we were having a little, little dinner party and one of the other kids 
was there and he's like, I heard him say to her, you want to know the F word? And I was like, what? whoa, we're not doing that. No, hey, let's move on. How about we blah, and I move it all away. And then later she comes over to me. She's like, I already know what the F word is and I know it's bad. And I'm like, what you do? What's, what's the F word? I, I'll, you have permission to say, you can tell me because no one else is around. And she goes, fart. <laughs> I, was like, I love you. That's I amazing. You. <laughs> Go fart yourself. Go fart yourself. <laughs> fart off. <laughs> well, you guys are great. You want to promote anything? We have a brand new season of Celebrity IOU coming out, which is very exciting. And we're casting for... Actually, I can't say who's in the next season yet, but it's going to blow your mind. You're oh, going to laugh good. so hard. You won't laugh as hard as your episode, but you're still going to laugh. Um, it's it's going to be great. Best. But yeah, it's exciting to be able to show people a different side of these celebrities. Yes, it is always... I always like showing people... Uh, uh, that's why I'm doing a celebrity tour now, to so that people can see different sides of me as a celebrity. I let people... For I think it's a seventeen dollars now. You can come and approach me and walk all, all like. Is it like is the art? underside the best side? <laughs> What's the best side? Uh, I think taint should, it taint that side. You should <laughs> just ask Rich's gynecologist; they'll tell you. Yeah. Yes, um, and you also winked. I, I I would imagine there are project uh, projects that you can't talk about coming up, but I do think that, and it's probably already in the in the pipeline. But you guys need to talk about economy, especially with with what's going on in our world yeah. and people don't know and the, the middle class is disappearing and they gotta know what to do with the dollar. And besides watching beautiful houses being renovated and, renovated and brought to uh, a whole other level, I, I think the average person, and you know, what somebody needs to do with their dollar to make many more dollars. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're here, everything from our furniture line to our shows, um, you know, any way we possibly can, we try to inspire people in our homes and help people have a safe, happy, healthy home and affordable home. Yeah. So if people go Scott onto Brothers. our site, they go to drewandjonathan.com. That we actually put articles up every day. Um, stuff drewandjonathan.com. Yep. And that okay. just teaches people things they need to know about the home. And, and everything that you do is on there. Yep. So they can get information about the shows, they can get information about casting. We're casting in LA, so we're doing forty houses a year in LA. What do shows. you look for when you want to cast? Actually, great question because some people I hey, applied. And you have to have a budget because these are real families who are really renovating. We want to see those stakes. So you have to actually have a budget to do your renovation. And we want diversity in the stories and diversity in the houses. So we don't want every single story to be first time homeowner. We don't want every story to be you know, rancher, Spanish style rancher. So it's a combination of things, but the, let us know the dynamic. Are, people need to be so fed up with their house that they, they don't even know what the, they're at the end of the rope. They don't know what to do. That's the person who's going to get cast on the show because we really want to come in and transform their lives by making it happen. So Jay-Z just spent $200 million on a Malibu home. He applied actually to do our show. Yeah, and but he, uh, didn't, he only had a $50,000 budget for that house. You so. can't do much. You can't no. do much. Once you spend two hundred million on the house there's not much left over but uh <laughs> wallpaper yeah 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 right. i mean really. we can give them some really beautiful wallpaper i love you guys you guys are funny you're entertaining you're informative i'm so proud that you come from the same country i do it, it, there's no question to why you are who you are your family is great you're inspiring and funny and anything i could ever do for you you pick up the phone i'm always there for you just remember Thanks. aren't you keep being howie Aren't you relaunching your website? We are, yeah. Yep. The relaunch is happening right away. I don't know when this airs. When is this going up? <laughs> oh, it's not. It was just a fun yeah, but set up. People can go there and kind of get the countdown and yeah. the relaunch. But uh, next week is the planned re this relaunch. This won't come up next week. Yeah. So by the time this airs, this will already will already. We just out. relaunched our website. Yeah, so go check it out. Check it out, drewandjonathan.com. We'll put a link, we'll put a we'll, link we'll put in a the link in. We'll show put notes. A link in. Yeah, so many cool things to learn. But you know, honestly, on social media, the big thing for us is that we love interacting with our audience because we learn and grow from what, what they tell us as well, what they want to see on the shows, what type of you know um, styles we showcase, and, and also um, some of the tips and tricks and stuff that we bring. Do you to want social. me to plan and videotape your proposal? All of these things uh -huh. are available. Yeah on our site you don't have to use them all or just a scavenger hunt just a scavenger hunt. just a scavenger hunt all right thanks guys thanks all man. right thank you it.